Oh, yeah, really? Well, you know, you should never come here. Yeah, he only got here because I actually campaigned for one night. The world was wall to wall. <laughs> Philip Burton asked me to, and like a fool, I went down and did it. Now, despite the efforts of all these people, assisted by a sympathetic overseas owned media, we still don't know what national stands for. So far, all we've had a succession of Me Too. They've got a duty of the National Party to tell the public what it is they intend to do. Remember, it was Keith Holyoke, a real National Party leader, one that I was proud to work under, who said, tell the people, trust the people. And that's National's problem. They don't trust the people, so they won't tell them. Now, look, there's all sorts of parties in this parliament. We don't agree with a lot of these things they say, but at least they tell the public what they intend to do. And we respect that. But there is something about National that is not quite right. It seems to be a party with secrets kept under wraps, like a boil covered over by sticking plaster. What has it tried to do since election 2005? What initiatives and policies have, has it launched since election 2005? Where does it stand on all the big burning issues of the day? What policies have they sought to support? They have spent two and a half years waiting for a snap election. That was never going to happen. Bad luck. But it's no excuse for doing nothing. You know, there's only one real alternative to this year's budget, and it's being put forward by one party, not afraid to tell the public its policies on the economy or socialism or social welfare or capitalism in this country. We are the ones who have got answers that have been around for a long time. Not something experimental, not something chosen by the paper shufflers of Queen Street or Main Street Wellington, but something to do with this country's long-running economic structure. There is still hope that we can go to the promised land, but we have to change our direction and head down the right path. That means creating a tax-free threshold, reducing GST to 10 per cent, a tax regime for exporters, rewriting the Reserve Bank Act to relieve interest rates and a better deal for the seniors. Madam Speaker, we are once God's own country, controlling our own destiny, built by generations of hard-working and innovative people. We have seen what this country and people can achieve. We in New Zealand First still believe in them, and we believe we have the policies and the priorities and the persistence to rebuild this country along lines that will work, and not along the lines of economic experimentation of the type we too sadly saw over the last 23 years. In short, my message to New Zealanders in the next four months, if they've got any idea that they want change, why don't they vote for change they can believe in? In that respect, my message to them is to hang on, because as before, there's help on its way.